Good morning! Um, I filmed an intro for this when I started filming, and then, you know, you're like, I'm gonna talk about A. And then you film, and you're like, I'm, I didn't talk about A, I instead talked about B, X, C, R, and L. So... Anyway, in this video, we're gonna cover many things. All of the different places that I have purchased baseball caps to embroider on and their pros and cons and the most recent shop the first bulk order I've ever placed um, the difficulties the trials and tribulations of bulk purchasing American product when you live in Canada and some little tippies and trickies if you are um, hoping or trying to do that and also where to source the fucking cutest baseball caps in the world because it took me a year to find them so I pass this nugget of information on to you, person who probably is not going to bulk buy cute baseball caps, but I mean, I'm funny. You can watch the video anyway. Ask any one of my imaginary friends. They all think I'm a riot. Um, I've got manic energy today, heads up. I'm like, I'm gonna make a useful video. Sure. There's definitely some useful tidbits like buried in the chaos that is any video I make. <laughs> I hope I hope you enjoy the information. And if you don't enjoy the information, I hope you enjoy the hats. And if you don't enjoy the hats, I hope you like me. Yes, yes. Rolling. We're fucking rolling. Rolling on the roof. What's up guys? Look how cute I look today. Me too. It's like our hairs look the same size for once. <laughs> No, you can't, you keep, anytime we're in a picture together, Richard, like, puts his head like this, so he just looks like a little shoulder goblin. I am a shoulder goblin. This video is about how cute I look today. <laughs> um, today we will not be interrupted by Richard too much because some little bird is flying away. Going to a bookstore. I'm leaving. This is my first time As outside in years. As if he can fucking read. <laughs> so, someone knocking your door. Can you go get it? Fetch the mail. Okay, I'm gonna try and launch him while he's, uh, getting mail. Hey, What's up, guys? Welcome back. <laughs> hey, Beth. I think I'm just gonna make every video to Beth now. That's the series. The series. Title. What's the series? Dear Beth. It's like Dear John, but. No, it's John Deere. Yeah. <laughs> 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 That's so stupid. That's so funny. You're not. The I've totally peaked. That's the best joke I've ever made. <laughs> if I like worked with tractors, that would be funnier. Hey Beth, hey Mason, it's your girl, cutie pie, Norgalia. Today we're doing a very different kind of video. This is for any Canadian small business embroiderer who is looking for hats to bulk purchase. We are a very small niche, but we are mighty. Hi guys, welcome to my unboxing. Oh, I think it's tape. God. Okay, skip to this point if you want to listen to the hat content. Bye! Wait, wait, wait! Kiss my nose! Guys, should I kiss her nose? <laughs> Let us know in the comments below. No! Um, if you want me to kiss her nose, like this video, subscribe. Check out for part two if you actually kiss her nose. <laughs> this is a seven part series. Don't grow. Hey! I'm trying to talk to Beth. Peace. Say bye! Say goodbye to Beth. Peace, Beth. I literally love thinking about Beth watching these. Bye! Today we are, yes, the, so <laughs> I'm here today to assist all of the um, C, C, S, B, E, S, S, F, hats, people. I'm here for you. I'm here for my squad. I started Knock Thrice kind of randomly. I, I mean, it wasn't really planned. Uh, and it was last summer when I embroidered my first hat. An O oh baby, what a wild ride it has been since then. So I'm gonna take you through the journey of uh, trying to source fucking baseball caps because shockingly it's, it's incredibly complicated and it's taken me like a full year to, and actually I'm not even done, but it's taken me a full year to get to this point. And I wanted to help out because let me tell you, not many YouTube videos uh, come up when you search Canadian small business embroidery bug cat purchase. But now there will be one. There will be this one. I began embroidering hats because I saw other people doing it and it looked really cute. So I knew I wanted the, the, the vintage wash because I felt like it kind of worked with the embroidery. It was like a little rustic, you know, and my style is very rustic. 
Uh, and so I didn't know if anyone was going to buy them. <laughs> like, how do you know? How, how does one know? And I hadn't even really like officially launched a shop. I didn't have a name. So I didn't want to go and buy a bunch of hats. Um, so I actually started buying them off of Amazon because I could get them for, you know, not, not very cheap, but I could get them shipped quickly. And uh, it meant that if someone liked something I did, I could be like, great, I could get a hat in my hands tomorrow and embroider it for you. So I first started buying hats off of Amazon. I was buying Freebird 99, I think, um, which looked like this. They were about 17 Canadian dollars. That was a little bit of a tough pill to swallow at first, but you know, it was a really good way to test the market for me. And like I said, they came quickly and I was also au pairing at the time. So it's not like I had somewhere to buy a bunch of baseball caps. You know, as for the pros and cons for Amazon, uh, the pro obviously was that holy crap, it came so fast. Like the next day it was in my hands. It was great. Uh, the quality was really good and that it was easy, I guess it was really easy. And the cons, um, of which there are many, the biggest being fuck Amazon, number one, number two is they were pretty pricey, you know, $18, $17 each was cutting into my profits quite a bit. Uh, and the color selection was pretty limited. And another weird thing about the uh, Amazon hats was that sometimes a certain color would be available for delivery like the next day, and sometimes it would be like two weeks. And I, you just never really knew. So anytime someone messaged saying like, love the butterscotch cap, can I get one? I'd have to check and be like, no. So it was kind of random, which is not great. All right, so that was my first spot. Uh, then I moved into my apartment, here we are, and was able to start ordering things um, <laughs> to get them a little cheaper. And of course, we turned to AliExpress. Now, if you don't know what AliExpress is, I'm not going to tell you. It's just like buying directly from China. The caveat is that it does take about um, a month or two to arrive. So then I started buying hats from AliExpress, uh, and I really wanted to make sure they were still good quality. That was a big thing. You can get hats for like two bucks, but they're they're just I, like it's not worth it to me, especially because I'm embroidering on them by hand. Um, it's you know my art, it's my work, and I don't want to embroider on a really crappy material that's gonna fall apart. Like it's just I don't want to do that. I started by buying a few hats from a few different stores on AliExpress and then uh, I would just keep track of them and which ones were really good quality and which ones I didn't like. And sometimes like one of the shops didn't send the right colors so I just kind of vetoed that one. Um, and to be honest, a lot of the stores sell the same kind of stuff. You know, it's kind of hit and miss a little bit. Uh, I do have a few stores that I would recommend. It's like these two. Uh, I, I have purchased from them before. You can often bargain with them. <laughs> people don't know this. You can bargain with the AliExpress people, especially if you're buying in bulk. So to do a pros and cons for AliExpress, pros were um, a bigger color selection than Amazon. Uh, cheaper, obviously. The hats were maybe about $8 each after shipping for the most part, because I wasn't buying a ton of them at a time. Uh, and they were good quality too. They, they probably weren't quite as good as the Amazon ones, but they were pretty close and I felt very happy using them to embroider on. The cons, on the other hand, uh, the biggest one obviously is that it took an awfully long time to arrive. I would just kind of buy the hats that I thought people would like and I was only buying, you know, four of each color really, like I'm just one lady. So I was a little tired with AliExpress, mostly the wait time. And thus began my hunt for Red October. No, my hunt for the right color caps. I have, I had this vision of like a pastel, you know, a sort of buttercup yellow. I wanted a lilac. I wanted a petal pink. Like I wanted some, some sort of sweet colors and that weren't just the vintage wash. And this was so hard. I do not know why this was so hard to find. It has taken me a very long time. I know that a lot of artists are hesitant to share their suppliers and like where they source their product from. And I get it. A part of me is like, no, it, it was so much work. It's my information. But you know what? Like, fuck that. 
in the world of art, there's room for everybody. If you bought the exact same hat as I did and did even the same design as I did, it would look totally different. And it was literally such a headache. I just, if I can save someone else from that struggle, I would like to. It seemed impossible to find these hats. I don't know why. So here's the big secret. Here is the shop. It's in the title, so I'm not exactly sure why I'm, why I'm making this such a big deal, but the shop is called KB Ethos, I believe. Or it's K Bathos. I don't know. I think it's KB Ethos though. So KB Ethos is a wholesale hat distributor company. The hats aren't made in America, but the brand is based in America. So this is like, this was a dream. When I stumbled on this website, I was like, <laughs> I was so excited. Uh, they had all the colors I wanted. They had the cute little pastels. They had, um, you know, standard baseball caps and then premium baseball caps. They had beanies, like they had bucket hats. I was just, I was feeling it. I was really excited. They were reasonable price, you know, from sort of like 350 US all the prices are in US dollars, three to five dollars for the most part. So it sounds like a dream come true, right? Uh, you know, great hats, good price, high quality, like, I'm, this is great. Until I noticed the little fine print. <laughs> Actually, it's not fine print, it's like really big on the website. KB Ethos is a wholesaler and they only sell to registered businesses. Fuck. I am a baby. I'm a, I'm a literal child in my like bedroom embroidering stuff. Registered business? What is that? Well, I had to find out and turns out it wasn't as complicated as I thought it was going to be. It was a bit of a headache, um, but it's good. Let me tell you how you to do it. I am in Canada, uh, so registering a business, there's like two ways to do it. There's one that is free and takes like five minutes and there's one that is more complicated and a little more expensive. Um, and I don't really know what the benefit is, but I've done both. So I'll tell you about them. So the first way to become like a registered business is to get a business number. Uh, this is really easy. I am based in Ontario. I like, I live in Montreal, but I'm based in Ontario because my mother lives there. So my, I'm like, that's where my taxes and stuff get sent. You go to CRA, I think. I'll put the website, I'll put the thing here, whatever, wherever you have to go, I'll put it here and you pretty much just type in your information, your SIN, and they give you a, a business number. So that's the first way to do it. It's free, the number gets generated very quickly, like within a minute you have it. Uh, and I, I, I suspect that that is enough to place your order with KB Ethos. The second more complicated but more legitimate way to register your business in Ontario is to get a master's business license. This is not a master's in business, but I have told everybody that I have a master's in business now. A master's business license um, is a more formal registration. It costs about $60 and you have to kind of put in a lot more stuff. You have to say if you're a sole proprietor, you have to, you know, just, just lots more information. Um, but then they give you a certificate of, of your master's business license, which you need if you're opening like a business account and like for some of your tax stuff. So. It's good to have eventually. This does mean I have to pay formal taxes and can no longer lie about my income. So the master's business license does have a lot more information on it. It has your um, address of the business, which you do often need when buying wholesale. So I have both of these things. I don't think I needed both of them, but I have both of them. I got them just to buy from KB Ethos. So let me tell you how that went. Oh my God, that fucking I do have uh, cost, import fees, any other hidden costs. Let's let, we'll talk about it. I've got some information over here. You do need a minimum order of hundred dollars, which is like pretty standard. And when you are registering for an account and when you are checking out, they ask you for your resale ID, resale tax ID number. I do not have a resale tax ID number, but I'm pretty sure that you can just put in your business number. Um, from the first easier way to register your business. I'm pretty sure that that's enough. The reason I got the master's business license was because when I tried to check out, it, I was unsuccessful. So I emailed them and just said like, hey, what's up, I can't check out. They asked me for like a proof of my business legitimacy. And in the little information packet they sent, it said that you needed to have uh, your address, like your business address needed to be on whatever evidence you gave. 
And the business number does not do that. So I was like, fuck, I got to get something more legitimate. And that's when I turned to the master's business license. So then I sent that in and it was fine. There was no issue. Uh, And turns out the reason I was having uh, trouble checking out was because I was trying to pay with credit card and for international orders, you have to pay with PayPal. There's no, there's no note on the site. That's just, they just, so the reason I don't think you actually need a master's business license um, is because apparently they don't like confirm. You don't have to be approved before you place the order. You just have to have something in that resale tax ID number bracket. And I'm pretty sure that your um, like easier business number would be fine. Just use PayPal, then you don't have to email them. So that's my tip. I don't think you need a master's business license to order from here, uh, but you do need a business number. Is this going to make any fucking sense? I do not know. Okay, we're almost we're almost there. We're getting into the gritty and the nitty. Flip that around. Let's talk numbers, baby. Let's talk math. So for my first purchase, I bought 60 uh, classic vintage dad caps at 350 US a piece, I believe. I also bought one single beanie because I wanted to test out the quality for next winter. Here are the numbers. The hats came to $212.50 US, which is this much Canadian. And the shipping was $49.04 US, which is this much Canadian. And that's a great price on its own. I'm like, sick. I'm, that's awesome. Fabulous. Until you get to the import fee. (laughs) So I got slapped with $119.14 Canadian import fee from UPS. $119.14. It's like 50% of the cost of the product was import fee. Now, I was expecting a certain amount of import fee. I was not expecting that much. I have since learned UPS is not the fucking way to go, okay? This charge should not be this much. Uh, it is, I've paid it and I, I've learned my lesson. However, UPS drastically inflates the import fees. And they, there's this thing called uh, customs like declaration where, um, <laughs> this is so complicated. Okay, you need like a customs broker You can outsource one. There's like independent customs brokers. You can technically do it yourself or UPS offers their services to do it. So UPS just jacks up that price and uh, you you can just do it yourself for cheaper or hire someone else to do it. I'm not going to get into that. Just know that my import fee was $119.14 Canadian. Thanks. Bye. Okay, so after all that, the total cost for the hats was $449.86 Canadian, which equates to just a little under $7.50 per hat. Now, this is still a really decent price for me. I know that you can buy them for a lot cheaper if you don't get slapped with that crazy fee, Um, but honestly, I'm very pleased with, with that price point. Um, it's about what I was paying from for the product from China. These hats, the quality, like I was happy with the ones from China. I am ecstatic with the quality of these hats. They are fucking luxe. Like I, I'm going to show you. They're fucking great. The quality is way better. And the best part, they came in like four days. I can't believe how fast this thing shipped. I'm pretty sure it shipped the day after I placed the order. And it was at my door like the week after. It was it was insanely fast. Now that was UPS that I was shipping with. Um, there was an option to ship with USPS, which I have since learned would have been the better option. It was about $100 shipping for 60 hats. I paid about uh, 50. So it was twice the amount of shipping, but I have learned that USPS charges a flat rate for import fee. It's about $20 or something like that. Uh, So ultimately, had I chosen that shipping option, while the shipping itself cost more, um, the total savings without that crazy import fee would have been less. I'm not mad. It was the first time I've ever done a wholesale purchase, which is like such a big step for me. Uh, I knew there was going to be hiccups. And honestly, they came so fast and they, they feel so nice that I'm just... I'm just so happy. Like, I'm really excited about it. I just want to embroider. Mm, I think that's all the math. It was a lot. It was a lot to buy at once. It was a little daunting. 
let's get into the good stuff. I'm going to show you the hats that I bought and I'll do a quick kind of like overview. The interesting thing is that some of the hats have very different textures and one of the style of hats, I got two different kinds of baseball caps, one of the style of hats is actually the exact, like to a T, the exact same hat that I was getting from China. Um, which is not surprising, like I'm sure that I, you know, you could find these baseball caps from China, but uh, yeah, it's like identical. So let me show you. <laughs> Alrighty. This is the size of the box. All right, so here are the hats. Wow. I got uh, 10 different colors. Oh my God, that fucking sun is crazy. I'm gonna put the name of the hat color here and you can find it if you want. So these are all premium baseball caps. They are 350 US at the wholesale price. All right, I'm gonna talk about the hats um, in general first, and then I will show you each specific color and hopefully the sun does not keep pushing me into a corner. So the hats were sent in these big uh, plastic sleeves. They were kind of like random, like there's different colors in different sleeves, seemingly with no relation, but it works fine. The individual hats uh, have a little tag on them and they come with a sticker and then on the inside they have this cardboard protector thing they are all 100 percent cotton and they feel really nice i believe that these are five panel i think so anyway let's look at the cute ass colors this is the classic pink i've been looking for the right kind of baby pink it really is a true baby pink it's not too bluey purple it's not too um orangey or anything just really nice got a little metal adjustable back. Oh, and I should mention on the inside, they do also have a sewn in KB Ethos label. You can't really take this out, but it's quite, I quite like it. I think it looks really nice. The next color I got was this absolutely beautiful lavender. So this is the lavender color. It's so lovely. Again, it's really nice, like neutral, not too pink and not too blue. They just are like the perfect pastels. Really, if I was going to design one, it would be exactly like this. And this hat color is really hard to find. Don't know if anyone else, <laughs> any of my other Canadian small business embroiderers looking for bulk hat purchases. I don't know if any of you have been struggling to find this color, but... Okay, the next hat is like one of my absolute favorites. I wasn't expecting to love this so much, um, but it feels fucking luxe okay so this is the classic light denim and oh my god if this is not the nicest fucking hat okay so you know like 90s jean denim like the heavy stuff that doesn't like flippity floppity doesn't really have any stretch when they fit you they fit you i don't know if you can see but the rim is like really thick and rolled and it's a it's quite like heavy like it's quite a dense um denim i just did my first embroidery on one of these it's like a little tricky, but ooh, it just, it, it's nice. Like this is fucking nice. Next color, we've got pistachio, I believe it's called. Yeah, this is classic pistachio. On camera, it looks a little bit um, more vivid, but in real life, it is, it's pretty pastel. I would almost say this is more minty than pistachio. In my head, pistachio is kind of a bit more yellow. This is quite a, a bluey, um, like light green, pastel green, still gorgeous really great and i'm excited to embroider frogs all over this thing next up is one of my personal favorite colors i love me a good dark green this is just my fucking color hgn i don't know what i don't know what this color code is i'll, I'll put the name here it's just a really beautiful forest green and again it feels really nice i've named this one goblin green in my shop it's like well, probably one of my favorite colors, but yeah, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't call it like an emerald. It's like a true forest green. It's probably leaning a little bit more yellow than blue, but because uh, it's fairly dark, it just looks like green. Like one of my other favorites, surprise favorites, I was not expecting to love, uh, <laughs> which is blinding white. No, which is vanilla, but I've called it buttercup because it's fucking buttercup. This is buttercup, okay? But the shop calls it vanilla. This is a like, yeah, I guess buttery yellow. Just a really lovely pastel yellow. I, I feel like this is perfect for summer, spring. Like, I'm so excited for this one. I wanna put bugs 
I want to put bugs on this hat. Now this is interesting. I think this may help somebody else who is looking for hats because this color is not exactly what I expected. So this color is called Tim. I'll put it here. This color is called this. Um, and in the picture, I thought it was going to be like a mustard. Like I actually thought it was going to look like this. This is from AliExpress. Also pretty nice quality, surprisingly. Um, but I thought that the Tim hat was going to look like this mustard hat. Um, but it's actually much more of like an oak. It's it's almost like a mix of brown and yeah and gold, like marigold and brown. It's um it does lean yellow, and depending on what you embroidered on this, it would lean more yellow. But like that's the comparison. You put it next to like Buttercup or this one. You know, it's just like it's like oaky. It's beautiful. It's really great. And actually, people on my Instagram like fucking love this one, but it is not mustard. Okay. Next up, we've got a classic, a khaki classic, a cast click khaki. I'll work on it. Um, yeah, this is just called khaki. I've called it Mothwing because she's a fairy. Um, but it's really beautiful. I would also kind of call this a stone color, but it definitely leans a bit more warm. Really, they just nailed the neutrals. Like. This is default khaki. It is the perfect khaki. It's not turning greenish. It's not, it's just great. It's a really good hat. Khaki, love it. Mothwing. Next up we've got, this is called Classic Brown on their site. And it really is a classic brown. I think I've called it Old Oak or Chocolate or something like that. This is a really rich brown. I'm actually quite impressed. I feel like brown hats can tend to get a bit chalky this is such a weirdly specific niche conversation knowledge that I have, but I have found that that brown hats can look a little chalky, and this is not. This has got no, like, creamy whiteness, you know, like this is creamy. This is not creamy. This is, like, true brown. It's really delicious. I want to put pumpkins on this one. And last but not least, we have the second style of hat that I got. This is not a premium baseball cap dad cap. This one's called pigment washed cotton baseball cap one size adjustable. The other ones are called premium baseball cap. This one's got extra words. These are the pigment washed cotton baseball cap one size adjustable hats. Uh, it looks almost identical. It has like the same rise as I can tell, same height. Uh, but as you can see, it is a vintage, a vintage wash. This says KB ethos on the inside, a different label. And I can say with like, 95% certainty that this is the same kind of hat that I was getting directly from AliExpress. This is not a bad thing. Like I said, those hats, I actually really like the quality of. This is one of them. Um, they are maybe a little, it's funny, they feel like more dense and a little like velvety. The 100% cotton ones really just feel like true cotton. I don't know, it's, you know, you everyone knows cotton hats, like they just feel like real cotton. These ones, they feel a little, like, fuzzy. I don't know. Just listen. Okay, listen to the difference. This is the cotton hat. Okay, this is the, the cotton, too, but this is, like, the other one. I don't know if you'll be able to tell. They feel really nice. Um, they just are a little different. And in my vast experience, uh, especially because I've done, I've embroidered so many of these hats from AliExpress. This material is really dense. It's like really tightly woven or something. The cotton hat, they're just much easier to get your needle through. Um, even the denim one, which is thick, it's like, it's it's like a natural weave. I don't know, I don't know what what is going on here. I do find that these you kind of have to like punch a bit through. That being said, I do use a very thick needle. Um, so maybe that's it. Maybe this doesn't matter at all, but this is a different kind of hat, like entirely from the cotton ones. Okay. I just wanted to have one like vintage wash option. That's it. That's all the hats that we've got. Because I've done this for every other like place that I've bought hats from, I will do pros and cons. Um, the pros for KB Ethos, pros are on this side, right? Pros, one, um, the color selection is fabulous. Okay, two, the quality fabulous. Uh, their selection is really good. They also have bucket hats. Uh, color, quality, selection, price is great. Really good price, especially if you live in the States. Not so much if you live in Canada, but it's still a really good price. Uh, shipping was 
the like maybe that's number take this one and move it up there that is number one the shipping was just so fast and i have been shipping things from china all year and it's just like i will buy my christmas product in july that's how organized I have to be. And if you've met me, if you know anything about me, that's not a good thing to bank on. The cons, I suppose, would be it's like kind of difficult to purchase from them. You do have to have a pretty large order, um, a minimum of 100 US dollars. Uh, and the biggest one is that you have to be a registered business. So this is definitely not an option for everybody. Um, I don't know how hard it is to get a resale ID in the States. I have literally no information for you i apologize um but in canada it seemed to be fairly straightforward if you don't want to register as a business that's like a different story then i can't help you get your hats from aliexpress uh, and that's it those are my pros and cons yay this is probably a very long video do you guys crack your knuckles that's it the sun is taking over uh i don't know what else to say finding this website was like a godsend. I mean, I did have to buy a buttload of hats. Will I ever get through them? Honestly, I don't know. There's a part of me that is hyper aware if I don't sell that many hats, I'm gonna have so many hats. We'll just do 60 hat giveaways. <laughs> get ready for my 60. Oh no, I'm doing Richard's bit. He's not even here. If you have any questions about the purchasing experience, you know that I answer every single comment because, whoa, Jesus, someone was mad that I said that. Um, you know I answer every comment, because I have 800 subscribers, but welcome to all of you. 800 is so many! Who am I kidding? This is fucking crazy. 800? So thanks for watching. Yeah, if you've got any questions about imports, I don't know man, it's such a mess. I'm still learning, like, so much. People are like, oh, your hats cost so much. I'm like, yeah, I know, but it literally took me like six months to figure out how to buy them in the first place. It's just surprisingly difficult. And every time you take a step forward, there's like three steps back. So you're like, I found the hats. I need a business license. I got a business license. I need a master's of business license. I got that. The PayPal won't work. I got that. I got import fees. I got that. What is a customs broker? I got like, it's just a fucking merry-go-round, okay? <laughs> it's just like this. That's not a merry-go-round. Um, thanks for watching. I hope you have a great life. It sounds so rude. Why does that sound rude when you say that? If you say, have a great day, it's like cheerful. If you're like, have a great life, <laughs> bye. And on that note, buy my hats. <laughs> okay, thanks everybody. Thank you. Applause for Nora for looking so cute. Can you believe I pulled off an Argyle sweater vest? Like, goodbye.